Exercise 8, SOLIDWORKS 2016. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at some basic modeling when it comes to freeform shapes, such as the underside of a boat. So we're going to make a boat hull in this case. And we're using the loft tool. So let's take a look at how this is done. We're going to start off. Um, the exercise starts on page 85 of the manual. And we're going to offset a series of planes for each section. And we're going to actually just draw one half of the section of the boat and on each of these planes and then loft between them. So with that being said, we're going to have an offset forward 6 inches, 8 inches, and 1 inch until we reach the front of the boat. So let's start a new part file. And select the front plane. Just one click. Don't start a sketch on it though. You just select it and all you're going to do is you're going to hold the control key and this is a quick way to offset a plane. If you hold control and get the tip of your pointer act just right over the edge of the plane that's showing, hold the left mouse button down and you'll see you could drag it forward as you're holding control and the left mouse button. Release the mouse button first then you could release control and on the left here you could type in an explicit value if you prefer. I'm going to type in 6 and hit enter and hit the green check. Okay, to show the other plane, the front plane, we want to turn that on. So right click and just click on the eye to see it. Okay, zoom out with your scroll button. And now let's try that again with plane one. Get the tip right on the edge of plane one, hold control, depress the left mouse button, drag it forward. That's going to be eight inches. So on the left, go ahead and type in eight and hit the green check. Finally, we want one offset only an inch forward. So off of plane two now, get the tip of your pointer on it, hold the left mouse button down and drag it forward just a short distance and type in one inch. The front plane is actually gonna be the back of the boat. The plane three will be the tip of the boat. So let's start now by selecting the front plane and start a sketch. Take your line tool and move over to the left of the origin and just a, a distance away, maybe a couple inches, just click and then connect to the origin. You'll get the orange dot. Make sure it's horizontal as well. If it's not horizontal, you're going to have some issues with your boat. Okay, and then in this case, this one really needs to be vertical. If it's not, you will not be able to mirror the boat properly. It's going to come out non-symmetric. So, um, in this case, uh, about one and a half inches or so, and then hit escape. Now what we're going to do is in the book, it shows here, we're just going to draw this profile. So let me zoom up to that. And the vertical is going to be two and the width is 2.5. So go to smart dimension. And this is going to be two. And this is going to be 2.5. All right, now you could go to the spline tool. Go ahead and click on the spline tool. Move your pointer to the end here on the vertex of the two and a half inch line, click. Now drag it somewhat, maybe at what looks like a 45 degree angle a bit, um, just down right about here, about a quarter of the way or two thirds, click. You'll see it will drop a point there. Okay, and then go ahead and move this down again, about the same uh, distance away from the vertex on the opposite side, click. And then finally connect it to the end of the two inch line, click. And then you could hit escape on your keyboard. Now let's add some dimensions to that. Go ahead and click on the smart dimension tool and we'll get the uh, shortest dimension here first, this point that's closest to the two and a half inch line. Click on the two and a half inch line and drag your dimension out. And we need that to be 1.25. Okay, and you'll see it will do some interesting things like that. That's okay. Now the next point, click on that. And again, click on the two and a half inch line, drag this out to the left, center the dimensions just so it's easier for you to see later on. And this one, needs to be one and a half inches. So 1.5. All right, now we'll go from the two inch line, go ahead and click on the two inch line to that point, the 1.5 dimension we just added. Drop that down below. 
and the book specifies 0.5 and finally click on this and this line this point here this should be the, our last point and that one will need to be one and a half inches 1.5 all right now lay these dimensions out so they're easy to see because later on we are gonna reuse the we're gonna reuse this sketch and if they're all discombobulated or in a just tied into a knot you'll actually tie your spline into a knot as you do this so again very good clean sketching techniques are required here all right at this point go ahead and hit exit sketch or rebuild now if we hit our space bar and go to the isometric right here you'll see there's the back of our boat now we want to copy that that sketch onto these additional planes we'll do one at a time now what you don't want to do when you're copying sketch or let's say you want an entire sketch with the dimensions to carry over you actually want to select it from the feature tree and control C or go to edit copy and then paste it do not do this don't just select individual entities and then assume that it's going to grab the whole thing because it will not it will just select that individual entity other things like dimensions might be left behind or other geometry so be very careful of that though it's nice if you just want to copy over a segment of a sketch we don't want that here we actually want to select the sketch from the feature tree over here one click and now hold control and hit C or you could go to edit and copy all right now select plane one you have to select the edge of it not in, in the center hold control and hit V is in Victor or you could go to edit and paste all right now that that's in position zoom up to it make sure you got the right one here and just double click on a line now I've seen sometimes where students double click and I don't know if they're just they're off a little bit and they don't manage to get the dimensions or the sketch doesn't appear to be edited remember all you could do then at that point you just right click over here or on the sketch and you'll see edit sketch is one of the icon options you won't see it now because I'm out of it I'll actually rebuild just so you can see that you could either right click and here's edit sketch or you could right click over here and here's edit sketch so either one if you can't double click on it and have it active uh, then just do that now one thing you'll notice all the dimensions carried over and it seems to be in position however it's blue blue means it's underdefined and we could even see that down below here so when it's blue like that we need essentially what it, it did it lost something it lost one of the dimensions or relations from the original sketch and I'll tell you right now what it is it was unable to relock into the origin because now that it's an offset from the original plane that relationship is missing or gone now so all you do is you just grab this point drag this far away and reattach it and I'm just holding the left mouse button as I do that and once you reattach it it'll turn black that means it's fully defined we just re needed to reestablish this um, relationship a constraint okay now what we're gonna do is we're getting towards the center of the boat so it's gonna start getting wider so we're gonna change some of these dimensions and I suggest doing them group by group so like do the group at the bottom first maybe then the group on the left just like we did earlier so for this next one just scroll up to the next page and I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this over and again the manual here is located on vertanu1.com under the SolidWorks basics just lost my page okay so when you're enlarging something a good thing so just so you don't tie your geometry into a knot is take the larger entities and dimension those first and work your way into the smaller ones because if you do it in reverse order if if it goes a lot larger scale a lot larger you could tie those smaller dimensions make the, they'll actually go out further than the largest dimensions thus you might tighten into a bit of a knot which there's the undo button to fix that but just be aware I'm gonna go with the this is just a good practice perhaps this is gonna be three so I just double clicked on that three this 1.5 I double click on that that's gonna be two 
and the 0.5, double click on that, 0.75. And again, let's do this side now. So double click on this, this is going to be 2.375. The 1.5 will be 1.75, so it's not terribly larger, it's just a, scaled up a little bit, 1.375. And if you notice that mine's rounding off, that's fine. Remember, you could always go to the IPS down here and edit document units and just set this to three decimal places if you wanted to see those details. But remember, it does internally recognize that. So, for example, if this went onto a CNC uh, program, um, it would actually recognize a higher precision than what you're seeing. Okay, now at this point, we're done with that sketch. You could go ahead and hit exit sketch or rebuild either one is fine now it should still have in the memory our copied entity so now we could just click on plane 2 and you could go to edit and paste and it should bring in the entire sketch and again if you want just double click on this and remember the trick you could just grab this drag it away and drag it right back to that origin until it snaps and it should turn black which is fully defined let's zoom up to that now this one's going to get considerably smaller for looking at the book here it's scaled down quite a bit so in reverse order rather than going with the large dimensions and making them smaller because this will tie it into a knot um, go with the small dimensions and work your way down okay so for example and, and start maybe with this one point two double click on the 1.5 that's point five and the 2.5 double click 0.675 and now these ones the smaller dimensions first double click 0.2 the 1.5 is going to be 0.375 and it looks a little see here this, this is what i was talking about where it looks like it ties into a knot geometry crosses over essentially itself and that's no good for extrusions so um but that's because we just don't have this finish so if i go to 0.6 now we have a nice condition and it's getting smaller as it's getting to the tip of the boat go ahead and rebuild or exit sketch either one's fine now you can see we have our three seconds now for the front of, of, of the boat the actual plane three go ahead and click on this and start a sketch this one's pretty easy all you need to do we're not going to copy over anything just have it come to a point go to the point tool up here and get on that origin when you get the orange dot click and then rebuild okay one other thing I just wanted to cover this is very very useful tool that you'll come across from time to time let's say you drew a sketch on a surface or a plane and it was the wrong one like for example if I want this you know instead of selecting the front plane I accidentally drop that on plane one or vice versa really nice tool here to move things you just right click on the geometry you want to move and you'll always find edit sketch plane now be aware hit rebuild before you do this usually to make sure that you've updated everything and that you're not in a sketch when you try this otherwise it won't come up you go to edit sketch plane and look at on the upper left it keeps track of the plane that 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 you're sketching on so if you want you could change that let's say I wanted it on plane 3 instead of plane 2 and hit the apply button look at that it just moved okay so this is what I describe as solid work being very forgiving if you draw on the wrong plane it's very easy to move it to a different plane but be aware sometimes if you're moving to a plane that's perpendicular at an or at a different angle um, it's gonna turn out not necessarily located in the place that you are hoping sometimes and sometimes you'll end up having to move it so just be aware of that I'm just going to hit undo here to bring it back. So edit sketch plane is a very nice tool, especially for the new user, even experienced users. I've accidentally selected the wrong plane before and sketched on it or things like that. Okay, enough said. Now that we have the geometry, we could actually hide the planes. If we go to view and um, actually hide show, and we want we could actually go to let's see here uh, planes and that will hide all the planes okay just remember where that is so next time if you want to bring those up again and see them but right now we just didn't want to see them any longer now the next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to go to lofted boss base 
Now SOLIDWORKS gives you the opportunity to select different points on a profile and this is really kind of nice in some cases, not in this one particularly. Um, but let's say if I clicked here, notice I clicked in that upper left quadrant. Now what if I click down here, what is it going to do? It corkscrews, okay, which is pretty cool, just not for this part. So to fix it, it's actually a rather easy fix. You just drag it to the upper left corner. Okay, so just be aware you could save some time and frustration if you just click in the area that you want it to drop into. Now, note that a point doesn't really matter because there's no profile really. Go ahead and select that point. Now, it will disappear for a moment, and that's because the weight is so tight, tied up in that little area, it cannot perform the loft. So what we need to do is under Start End Constraints, instead of the default for the end constraint, go to None, and it will loosen up that geometry condition. Otherwise, it wants to bow out and make this flowing geometry, and it just can't as a solid. It, it, it basically, what it's doing is intersecting itself. Okay, so that fixes that. All right, let's go and hit the green check mark. And now you can see we have half of our boat. Okay, the next thing is we want to... I'm going to hit the space bar and go to isometric here. And we want to mirror this across. So go to the mirror tool. The mirror face and plane could just be the side face. And then just click on the top of the boat and you'll see a preview up here. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. And now you have your boat, at least the boat hull. Okay, now with that being said, what if you want to just double check this geometry just to see how smooth it is? SolidWorks does a very nice job, especially if you have a professional graphics card with the real view graphics and you could lighten things up here. You could click on this. Let's go to plain white. Or even if you go to like um, different types of backgrounds, sometimes it you could really see what's going on there. However, if you want a little bit more detail, industrial designers especially want to see, it's almost like they want to be out there with the white gloves on over the surface of a, a smooth car, and you just want to make sure there's no imperfections on it which you can't always see. And so this helps you see that. So if you go to evaluate, you'll find two options for that. First of all, there's zebra stripe. And zebra stripe simulates, I guess as best as you can say, it's kind of like having the tubular lights, those old tubular fluorescent lights over a, a black car body or the body of the boat. And it shows you all the imperfections because you can see the, the light wrap around the surface. So this is very useful for interrogating the surfaces and making sure there's no abnormalities or things that uh, you undesirable characteristics. Um, you could go ahead and hit escape. Um, you could just turn it off here. There were some options in there, be aware. And then there's curvature. Now curvature, we'll get more into this uh, in the advanced class as well. Curvature analysis gives you, with a visible spectrum of colors, what's going on. And as you move to the pointer over the surfaces, it'll give you the radius of curvature for that particular region that you're selecting. So at any point you could really interrogate the model again. And things that, like for example here we see a significant amount of variation in color which might be an issue for shelling or other entities. But nonetheless though you could really see how it gives you another perspective you might say. Go ahead and you could turn off curvature. All right, now let's say you wanted to build on this boat. Let's chisel away at it a little bit. And I'm just, I always, I sometimes have a contest for my students. Like, let's see who could build the best boat. And I've seen some very impressive boats, everything from the Titanic to aircraft carriers to uh, canoes, because you can modify this extensively. And just remember, if you ever wanted to change the length or the width, just double click on it and all those dimensions appear. And it's just a matter of just double clicking on the dimension you want to alter and making a change to it. Let's say I wanted to have this go out four inches and then hit this little rebuild button and you'll see it will widen it. Okay, I'm going to set it back to three and hit rebuild. So be aware, it's very nice. And also, one other thing, you can see the dimensions for the extensions of the planes. So if you want to lengthen it or shorten it, you just double click on those and that will 
adjust it. There's also some tools up in uh, the features here. There's the Instant 3D that helps too. And sometimes it gives you uh, arrows and things like that that you could just pull out, pull out the points and move them. But generally when there's the constraints on, you have to turn off override constraints. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and select this top face. Because it's flat, we could sketch on it. I'm going to go normal to the top view. And from here, I'm going to actually just select it and use the offset entities to offset some geometry internally for the cabin. Say I want to make a sailboat here. And I want a little walk around path. It could go around and then here's the cabin. So I'm going to apply that. Now I'm going to go and I'm just going to put a little design on here. A cutout for the back of the boat where someone could sit and use the rudder. And then you just going to go to trim entities and again you know do whatever you want with this one this is just really just it's excellent practice for someone who wants to spend some time I'm just throwing something together very quickly be where you could spend hours on the boat and the longer you spend on it generally the more impressive the boat will look it's a great uh, thing to challenge yourself with because you're gonna find yourself doing things and exploring uh, tools inside here that are gonna help you out I'm gonna extrude this out now I want to have a little bit more angled, so I'm going to use the draft, and then I'm going to adjust this draft for the cabin of the boat here, make it a little bit maybe more aerodynamic, and hit apply. Okay. Now I'm going to make a little cutout here. Be where you can shell this to some extent. Um, in reality, uh, I don't know if you'd necessarily be shelling something this small out. Um, you'd maybe chisel away at it on the inside. Shelling isn't always the best thing. Problem you'll find a lot of times is on the tight areas near the tip that it won't, it'll fail to shell because the geometry intersects itself. So some, uh, some little things you could do is you could cut that little tip off um, and model something in. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with that. But um, anyhow, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to hit convert entities. Oops, let me go to sketch. First, I got to start a sketch on that surface. Now I can select that edge, go to convert entities, and I'll go normal to again the top here. And we could actually, um, you know, I'm just going to draw in some geometry here. And I could go just halfway that way. And then I could draw this and convert that, hit escape by clicking on it, could convert it to construction geometry, then mirror this over. Just select these entities. Oh, careful, I went the opposite direction there. Select that, and then just go to mirror entities. And I have a solid object line, don't want that. Okay, and this should be enclosed. And you could add dimensions if you wanted, but I'm going to go to Features, Extrude, Cut, and select that profile. I'm not going to have it go too deep, just a little area down below there. And I could add the draft again if you wanted to have it match. Okay, as far as a rudder, I could go to the right plane, start a sketch. And I'm going to go to the, uh, I'll go Normal 2 here. And you know, I mean, again, I'm just really throwing this together. I, I'm not really spending a whole lot of time here. We'll have it go into the boat a little bit. And again, this is not reality, folks, so... Just kind of showing some little tricks. I'm going to go to extrude boss base. Uh, we'll go mid plane, make it rather thin, maybe 0.1. Okay. Normally that those would be like circles. I mean, it, it's just really just a visual thing. Okay, then uh, let's say I want to put a sail on here. I could select this top face, start a sketch, select the top here, go to the circle tool draw where I want to have the mass and I'm going to extrude that. Let's extrude that up. Whatever the height you'd like. Oh, that's really high. Although maybe we want that. Okay, um, and then again add the draft but set it to maybe only one degree. 
uh, if that, maybe even 0.5. There we go. All right, now I could select that um, right plane again, start a sketch. I'm going to go to the right view orientation, and we could draw in the attachment for the sail. Again, I've never really designed boats in reality here, so I'm just going off of what I remember seeing when making little models and stuff. Okay, and then in this case, um, you could either just extrude that, or if you want it revolved, you could do this. You go to Features, Revolve, and select that bottom edge. Um, that looks a little funny, but if you wanted that, or else you could just go to Extrude This, and again, do the select the mid-plane option, and 0.05 maybe. Let's see, oh, that's way too thin, sorry. 0.125. So there's a lot of different things you could do. Like if you want to make the sail now, we could use the tools that we learned in exercise seven for making 3D curves. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and select the front plane here, and start a sketch, and I'm gonna go normal to the front. And I wanna have some wind in the sail. So just up here, I'm gonna have it come out and then have it come in and let's see actually I should probably turn it to wireframe so I can see where that post is there we go okay I'll attach it to that so that's our front view of the sail and now we could go to the um, right plane and start a sketch and then we draw another spline and we could have that come out a little bit like this. Now we hit rebuild and you could control select both sketches and go to insert curves and again this was right out of um, exercise 7 projected and you should see part of the sail there at the green check okay that's the uh, the one part and now we could go to um, I'm just going to cheat here. I'm going to go to the right plane just to finish this up. And again, use the spline tool here and have it come out just like so. And we'll just make this one flat. In reality, it wouldn't be, but now we have two curves. Now what we're going to do, instead of the lofted boss base, you could use a lofted surface. So you're going to have to bring up the surfacing tools. Just right click on any of these options here and find surfaces and inside surfaces surfaces are just a, a thin sheet so we could go to lofted surface and select those two geometric entities and hit apply let's take a look at what this looks like shaded with edges and there we have our boat i'm going to hide this actually that curve Okay, so that completes exercise eight. In the manual, the next exercise is to create the bottom half of the smoke detector that we did in L7. So we, we made the top half on, on that, now we're making the bottom half here. So we have a two and a half inch diameter there's a little lip there, there's some geometry. So let's go ahead and do that now. So again, those of you in my classes, usually I prefer that you pause the video, minimize it, try it on your own, because this is not that difficult of a part, but it's great experience for yourself. But if you want, you can watch it too if you get stuck on it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and on the top plane, start my sketch. I started a new part file, by the way. Uh, draw out the two and a half inch diameter and just put 2.5 and that gets extruded let me bring up the drawing here <clears throat> and this drawing is on page oops, 90 okay and the thickness is a quarter inch 0.25 Hit the green check. 
go ahead and fill at the bottom edge and let's just take a look at that the radius at the bottom is called out here on the detail 60 thousandths so go to fill it select the bottom edge make sure it's 0.06 and hit apply now you could go ahead and shell this out select this face and let's take a look what the typical wall is on this um, no actually in this case this is not because we have a lip on here you don't want to shell it because it's this varying wall thicknesses we get into that you can do that in the other version but actually we get an undercut in some cases and you'll see I should say not in the other version but in the other class the advanced class we go into multiple thickness shelling which is pretty easy but I'm not going to do it in this case just going to model it up as is all right so what we see here is that the floor thickness is 60 thousandths but the wall varies a little bit here um, so we're going to have to oh, look at this uh, 2.4 so select this face and start a sketch on it. Draw a 2.4 inch diameter for the cutout. And then go to features and extruded cut. Now what you could do is you could use offset from surface. Select the bottom surface as your offset surface and have it set to the 60,000, so 0.06. Hit enter and you'll see look at that you can see the preview showing it's only going to go whatever depth it is and stop at that 60 thousands now I guess I could have shelled that but let's see maybe this wall is gonna be a little different I can't remember um, so anyway let's uh, go to uh, create a new sketch on that surface and go normal to the top there draw another circle And I believe at this point I'm missing one of the dimensions on this print. But here you see 2.45, but the depth of the cut is missing. So it's approximately, I think it's like, actually I believe it's like 60 thousandths. But oops, let's go ahead and dimension this blue line though. 2.45. And then actually, um, because we want to cut on the outside, select the outer edge and hit convert entities too. So now we have a nested circle inside there. And what that's gonna do, this is, I'll show you a cool little trick here, go to extrude boss base. Now it just extrudes that little segment there. Now we want it, not an extrude boss base, um, actually that needs to be extrude cut. So cancel out, go to extrude cut, and you'll see it will cut into that. And Actually, I'm not sure if that's 60,000. Might only be 40. Let's change it to 0.04. There we go. And hit the green check. And now it's generated a little lip. So with that being done, now we could go ahead and focus on the patterns inside. I'm going to turn off ambient occlusion. It's a little difficult to see there. I'm going to select, let's see here, um, select this face and I'm going to go normal too. Now, if we look at those ribs that are in there, let's look at the detail, we can see they're 0.04 thick. There's eight of them. They're 45 degrees offset from each other. All right, and over here we can see they go from the outside. They're a quarter of an inch to the inside. So that's not too difficult to do. You could actually use a center rectangle, if you like, and just create one here and just have it go to this edge lock it in there now hit escape and control select this center point to this point and make them horizontal I'm sorry uh, it should be vertical okay all right now we could add that dimension for the thickness just dimension this 0.04 and then from the outside here click on that to this edge now you're gonna get this dimension here just bypass it don't type in a new dimension yet just bypass it over here you'll see you have the first arc condition go with minimum 
and now you could go ahead and either there or here change the value to the 0.25 and there we have a rip now be aware the reason you could uh, do this and um, is because the intersection these are actually tan uh, I should say yeah they're on the edge even though this is showing this way this is actually more of a graphical thing going on here so essentially if you go to performance you could set this up a bit higher and it will produce a more yeah didn't do a whole lot there anyhow let's go ahead and extrude that so go to features extrude boss base and extrude it to this face or this edge actually let's go to up to surface actually and select this surface okay now what's happening here is um, actually I probably should have I did this out of order I should have actually had that cutout come later but that's okay SolidWorks is pretty forgiving let's go ahead and just apply this as is now you can see that little area there that's not what we want so just reorder the boss extrude above the cut extrude if you can't if you can't let's try dragging this down below um, or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete it and it's going to want to delete the boss extrude too okay alright so what I'm going to do I'm just going to briefly delete boss extrude 2 it will leave the sketch behind but now the cut extrude actually I'll try and see if I can at that sketch apparently this uh, there's something aligned to that edge of the cutout I must have aligned it to this edge so that can cause a problem so let's just double click on this and see what we have here there's a coincident let's delete that coincident and make it align to the bottom edge all right now we should be able to let's see can we drag this up uh, it's not letting us drag it okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the cut extrude and it deleted my sketch so that's that's okay what I'm gonna do instead is I'll we'll just resketch that select this face start a sketch there are several ways you could do this rather than run you in circles let me just do it the correct way here I'm gonna go ahead and draw a new one in here go to smart dimension okay and from here this is 0.25 and this is a 0.04 and actually this is not 0.25 my mistake there uh, just click on it go to leaders that needs to be the minimum forgot okay now we could change that to 0.25 alright now click on this and the origin and make those let's see vertical there we go now we could go ahead and extrude that up to the surface uh, let's just actually select up to surface select the surface here and apply now we could use this sketch click back on the remnant of that sketch that we had earlier go to extrude cut uh, hold on a second there we go select the sketch from the feature tree not just the entity okay now here we're going down to the 0.04 it's going to cut that out so a little bit of a roundabouts way sometimes you could reorder things but I had a, a couple relationships that were tied together on those so it made it a little more challenging than it normally would be all right select the right plane start a sketch and let's go normal two here and this way you're going to have to go to wireframe and draw in a corner rectangle from this corner here down like that what we're doing is those little cutouts there's little notches that are called out in the book here and we see a 0.15 dimension from the outer edge to this location so technically this if we subtract that 0.15 to this it's only 0.1 deep oh 
and also Okay, sorry about that. Had a little uh, technical thing that came up. Hit the wrong button. Okay, so uh, this then is dimension 0 0.210 off the base. So let's go ahead and add those dimensions now. So click on this line from here, 0 0.210. And then we'll go ahead and click on this. And and I just realized that actually I had the wrong thickness overall. This is, I put a quarter inch, it's actually supposed to be 0 0.310. So forgive me for that. I'm going to hit rebuild, and that's an easy fix. Just double click on this geometry here, find the 0.25, change it to 0.31, and you'll see it extends up. Now I could double click back on here and make my changes. In this case, 0.21 is fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and dimension this and that's just point 0.1. Okay now I'm going to go ahead and shade that and go to features extrude cut and you could select um, actually yeah we'll go with blind there and we'll go with direction 2 blind and just make sure it cuts out more than you want or you could go to the edges I suppose. Alright so there's the cutouts there now we just need to pattern that. So that is boss extrude three and cut extrude four. And by the way, there's there's better ways of doing this. I just hadn't done it in a while and I'm doing it off the cuff. So um, my apologies on some of the errors here that I'm making. But at the same token, look at it as a learning experience. Just Okay, so now I want those patterned. I'm gonna click over here on parameters. I'm gonna select the outside. Make sure it's set to eight instances, equal spacing and hit the green check mark. And one of the problems here, I just realized, is that cutout, as we see here, because of the pattern, and when the pattern was done, I should have actually done it earlier. So let's see if we could just roll that up. And uh, unfortunately, no. Instead, let's see if we could bring the cut down below the circular pattern. So I just grabbed cut extrude three and dragged it down below circular pattern one. And it made the change accordingly. Okay, select this face and start a sketch. And let's actually get to the uh, proper orientation here. I'm going to go with the top view. There we go. All right, now the, this next little cutout area. If you look in the manual, we have this detail for the wall mount. And what we're looking to do is make this geometry that you see here. And there's a different, couple different depths. There's 0 0.02 for the overall, and then, then there's a through for that inside section. And so we see 0.18 and radius on the outside 0.1. So let's do that. This is where this straight slot comes in handy. Just do one up here at the top, drag it up, click and drag this out. Hit escape. Let's first align this. Control select that line, the center line, and then this point, and make them coincident. Now go to the Smart Dimension tool and make this point one, and then the distance between the two. I could have dimensioned the center line as well. It's point one eight. And finally, we have to locate it. And to locate that, it's uh, let's see. 0.82 to center from the top. So this top arc to this right here, click 0.82 and now it's located. Go ahead and cut that. Go to features, extruded cut, and it's 0.02 deep. Hit the green check. Okay, so that's partial, partially completed. Now select this face and start a sketch. And for this one, you can use offset entities and let's make it 0 0.05 and reverse it on the inside. Hit the green check. Now select the circle tool and at that center, 
drag out a circle and connect it to this edge. Make sure you'll see that this drags out. You could actually control select this and this and make them co-radial the same size. Oops. Now I use the trim entities and I'm using power trim and I'm just going to erase the geometry inside here and now we have our cutout. Go to features, extrude cut, through all. Alright, that just needs to be patterned. So select those two features, the last two cut extrudes, go to linear pattern and the edge, you could go ahead and just select like one of the vertical edges there. We only need two. We're going to reverse it and then the book specifies it's a 1.5 distance. So right up here type in 1.5 Oops. and you can see it's located at the bottom. Hit the green check. And that completes lab 8.